Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kinney and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And we are going through the entire book of Revelation, obviously. And uh, right now we're still in Revelation chapter 3. You're more than welcome to go back and look at our previous lessons, or you can start right here, uh, bounce around however you like. Uh, every single one of these videos is nice and short, and uh, we wanted to keep it that way so that it didn't come across as overwhelming or scary. We know that Revelation sometimes is a book that we avoid and that we don't uh, always enjoy reading because maybe we don't think we understand it. So I wanted to make it simple and uh, break it down just into tiny little bite-sized chunks. You're welcome to read along. Uh, we're reading the letter that Jesus is dictating to the church in Laodicea. Uh, the beginning of Revelation starts with seven letters to seven churches. And interestingly, uh, Laodicea is geographically between two other cities. Uh, one is Hierapolis, uh, and Hierapolis had a hot mineral spring. They had a hot mineral spring and people would go there to um, bathe in the hot springs or to even drink the hot springs because of the medicinal uh, value of the water. The other city that Laodicea was between was another city called Colossae. Now Colossae is the same city where we get Paul's letter to the Colossian church. And Colossae had the exact opposite. They had a cold running spring that people would go there to uh, drink that water and it was really pure. Well, because Laodicea was in the middle of these two, uh, they would get the runoff of both of these different cities and the water that came down to Colossae uh, was warm. It was lukewarm. In fact, uh, because of the route that it took to get to the city, by the time it got to uh, Laodicea, it wasn't even good to drink. In fact, if you drank it, it would probably make you sick. Which is interesting because in Revelation chapter 3, verse 15, Jesus says to the church, I know your works, I know you, and you are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot, but because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You know what this is like. It's like coffee, right? How do you like your coffee? Well, you probably like it one of two ways. You either like it piping hot or you like it over ice and chilled. But I know when I bring my coffee to work and I leave it in my container, I'll sit there on my desk and it's just getting warmer by the second. And eventually you go to take a sip and the coffee is lukewarm and it, it doesn't really taste good anymore. And Jesus is saying, look, I'd rather have you totally on fire and excited for your faith or completely the opposite, just completely off. I don't want you to be casual. Don't be casual about God. So why is this church so casual about God? Why are they casual about their faith? Well, you look at the next verse. Verse 17 says, For you say, I am rich. I have prospered and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. So these people didn't have a proper view of themselves. They saw themselves through the lens of their wealth and their problem was they were arrogant and that arrogance probably came from this puffed up feeling of self-reliance. You know, Laodicea was actually a very wealthy city. One of the stories about their city and their wealth was um, a while back their entire city was destroyed in an earthquake and the people were so rich and they had so many resources that they rebuilt their city completely on their own with no assistance from any other neighboring cities and they took no money from their government. That means they had a crisis happen, right? And the government offered funding to help stimulus, right? To help uh, bring a stimulus package to, to the residents and they refused and they said, we can do this on our own. They had enough money. Do you know people like that? People that don't need anything? You know, their birthday or their anniversary rolls around and you have no idea what to get them because literally they have everything. They are doing just fine on their own. They need no help from anyone. And if a crisis happens, they just resolve it. They get a new one, right? 
And they would probably say they certainly don't need Jesus. Or there's people who take Jesus, but they just add Jesus. You know, their life's already doing pretty good. They're doing pretty good. And they just kind of add Jesus to their life, like insurance or a little something extra. You know, we add Jesus just in case. And Jesus says, that's the wrong place to be. This is not where I want you. But the people who are going through life just fine, and that they don't need God, they don't need a relationship with God, Jesus says, you need to come to the place where you realize that you have a desperate need for God, that you have a desperate need for your Savior. Jesus says, you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, naked. He says, that's the truth. That's the reality that you don't see. You see yourself as rich, but in fact, you are all these things. You have to come to a place where you say, you know what? I have nothing to offer. I cannot do this on my own. I cannot fix myself or save myself. And we have to get to that point. And I think when you finally get to that point and you can admit that, that you can admit that you desperately need Jesus, then I think you become on fire for Christ. That you go from that completely cold side all the way to the completely hot side. Jesus says in verse 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich, and white garments, so that you may clothe yourself, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and add salve to anoint your eyes, so that you can see. So these are all the opposites of the things that Jesus said. He he said, you you think you're rich, you think you have great clothes, you think you can see, but Jesus says, can you, instead of relying on your own wealth and your own merit, can you come to me and get those things from me? He says, I think only when you come to me and you receive your wealth and your worth and your value from me, that you'll truly be clothed, that you'll truly be rich, that you'll truly be seen. Verse 19 says, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. These have been really harsh words to this church. And he leaves them with this last pardon. And he says, do you know why I said all these words? I said that because I love you. Jesus says, I said that because I love you and I want you to change. And it's only because I love you that I want you to change. I want this relationship. You know, parents correct, parents discipline because they love. And I think we don't read Revelation because of all these harsh words, these harsh judgments and these disciplines. And they make us feel bad and they... Uh, they make us avoid reading this book. We think these words hurt us. But those words that are there, like Jesus says, they're meant to help us, meant to mature us, meant to make us grow. And then in verse 20, here's another very classic verse that we all know. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. You know what I love about this passage is it's a reminder that God pursues me. That God says, if you hear me, right? If you hear me, you will open the door and I will come in and I will spend time with you. Is that you? Has God been knocking? Do you feel like you're in that middle area, that lukewarm area? Are you ready to open the door and allow God to come into your life? and to transform you, I would invite you to make that prayer. Seek out uh, a local church near you. Find a community of believers who are on fire for God. Join that church and give them just everything you have because God gives you everything you have. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.